Hello, I'm here to talk to you today about our EE488 communication system capstone design project. We are the comm group, Charlie, Oscar, Mike. Um, our focus was beamforming. Our first objective was to advance the process of directional signal transmission and reception through the use of beamforming theory realized through our USRP devices, as seen here. Next, our goal was to prototype a 5G MIMO channel that's multiple input, multiple output. Finally, we wanted to design a system that utilizes optimum antenna orientation as well as modulation scheme to maximize the received signal power and thus maximize channel capacity. 5G is utilizing frequencies that are higher than 4G, which will in turn have uh, an effect in the wavelength of the transmission. Um, so the wavelength of the signal will be in millimeter range and antenna arrays has to be at least half a wavelength away from each other to not have any correlation to, towards each other. So uh, by having higher frequency and shorter wavelength, we can uh, pack many number of antenna arrays in a small uh, space. So that makes it possible for us to utilize beamforming for 5G system. Beamforming is a signal transmission technique which uh, utilizes n number of antenna arrays to send the same signal at the same time to have a direction of a beam towards this uh, desired user. So when that happens, it reduces the interference and it increases increases the received signal power and as a result it, incre it also increases the channel capacity. Uh, we can also change the direction of the beam by changing the phase of the signals from each antenna arrays and also we could do we could also change the direction of the beam by changing the amplitude also. Uh, so the platform that we use for beamforming is software defined radio. Software defined radio is an RF device used for communication systems. It uses software and digital signal processing to replace much of traditional hardware, such as mixers and filters. Traditionally, we would have to match the software with the hardware, but with software-defined radio, we are given much more flexibility and we're able to prototype um, different systems uh, very quickly. Uh, so we can see our results uh, right away. For hardware, we use the National Instruments USRP 2943R. And for software, we use a little bit of MATLAB, but we um, ended up using LabVIEW with the Communication Systems Design Suite. So we worked with um, three modulation schemes. We worked with QAM, uh, a 4x2 transmission, so four transmitters, two receivers, and 4x1, which is four transmitter, one receiver. Uh, we start off with QAM. So we had two antennas transmitting uh, four QAM at the same time, and then we uh, tried to have a receiver antenna and try to pick up where the beam was formed. So when we picked up where the beam or the main lobe was, we got a very like pretty clear signal. And then when we were on like a side lobe or somewhere like off the path where it wasn't, um, the beam didn't show anything, we just had like a bunch of noise and scattered. And then we also worked with um, four by one transmission here. And then this is showing you that we had non-coherent transmission. And that's why the graph is kind of distorted, but you can see that our received power is much greater than when we had it just as like a one by one. And then we also did for a four by two. And then when you see for a four by two is uh, the graph had even better performance than a four by one for a non-coherent uh, transmission. Okay, so going into the lab view block diagrams that we have, we have two transmitter lab view programs, one for QAM transmission and one for multi-channel transmission. And so the QAM transmission basically includes indicators that suggest channel rate, I'm sorry, channels, sampling rate, carrier frequencies, um, gain, and the MRA modulation scheme, so basically the number of signals and the reference to the baseband that transmits constantly while it's on, and you can stop at any time and the other LabVIEW block is the multi-channel block, and the multi-channel block basically has four individual waveforms. And instead of having the modulation scheme, we can set these waveforms to whatever you want. So we set them to four sine waves initially, and then we also did four rectangular waves, or square waves. And then 
you can adjust the frequency gain or phase on all of these and so there's actually an indicator that you can change the phase difference to get different values or see how the phase difference affects the final beam when transmitted. So some of our core takeaways are as follows. First, implementing a MIMO channel can result in an improved signal to noise ratio and thus an improved channel capacity. Second, higher order modulation schemes lead to improved performance. Third, match polarization at both transmitter and receiver side leads to better signal reception. Fourth, the LabVIEW communication design suite is extremely effective in creating modulation schemes and uh, cascading inputs in um, communication systems. Finally, with like the use of um, two by one column, we can see like the directivity of the beam and the uh, side lobes. And most importantly, thank you to Dr. Kwan and the entire electrical engineering department at CSULB for making this all possible. Go Beach.